Remember the video where I cried when I didn't get Greenhouse 1.0? Here's 2.0 with concrete in it. Yep, real. It's awesome. It's absolutely amazing in here right now. I came out here freaking out because of the drains and I walked into this beautiful thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a moment right here. I figured I'd share it with you. Look at that eastern sun going. Fish Tank people, Dawson's Fish Tanks bringing it to you on a Greenhouse Saga Sunday. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. Today's video, we're gonna give you a little update on what's been going on in Greenhouse 2.0. No drama, just the real. Let's do it. Do so you guys wanna see what's been going on? Follow me. First things first, we still do not have our uh, asphalt, concrete or whatever done. That's the last step in. It's costing way more cash than I would have liked but that's another video. The fun stuff is happening inside of Greenhouse 2.0 because it's actually got some green in it at this point. I'm gonna walk you through here. And before I roll inside here, I wanna quickly talk about the concrete, folks. Concrete is hard to do, concrete is expensive, and concrete is awesome, but it was a hard fought battle. During the pouring of the concrete, we had to make two quick modifications. One, I watched my wonderful father-in-law, Poppy, hop down on his hands and knees with a hacksaw and move the backflow preventer back here because the original plumber put it slightly in the wrong spot. And then yours truly had to make a quick modification on a drain in the bathroom. That being said, huge shout outs to my friends at Hemingway Concrete. I absolutely love the work that they did. As you can tell by the tears in my eyes when I walked in in the beginning of this video. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification button because we're gonna be bringing you a ridiculous amount of videos from the greenhouse you're about to see. We started framing it up. I gotta give a huge shout out to my man Aaron over here who will be on camera later. He's actually come down from Michigan. A lot of people said they were gonna come and help. He actually was like, yo, dude, I'm in, and he did. So super duper excited to have some help. Uh, you spend a bunch of money, I get the smallest office. There's a handicap accessible bathroom with the toilet and a urinal sink. And in a hot greenhouse, one would not be complete without a giant drinking fountain outside. So I've actually got a drinking fountain as well. I gotta give a quick introduction to my man, Aaron Larry. He came down from Michigan. Everybody says, I'm gonna come down and help you. Aaron actually did and hit it up. So dude, can you, I'd love to act like I know what's going on. What'd you do this weekend, dude? You came uh, down on Tuesday afternoon. What, and Josh came with it. So what you guys, what you guys been doing, man? Josh helped me. We uh, framed up the uh, office, bathroom, closet in the back. This is gonna be your shipping and receiving area. Uh, this week we put up the header right here. The support for the floor is that the beam? across there. Yep, this is the right. beam, and uh, that supports the weight of the second floor up there. Because of how the barn's built, we built it in three different platforms, all with two by tens to support the weights. So you can have fish tanks up there, you can have nice. people up there, you know, whatever needs to be up there will be safe and secure for nice, sure. Dude. And you're gonna come down and help with the drywall and all that too, huh? Yeah, and it's plumb square and level. So oh, we yeah. do. What happened with the gas pipe when you came in? Uh, the guy kind of ran it in a way that was conflicting with how it was going to go. I mean, if we're going to put a second story up there, if you look right there, we're going to put a second story up, that's got to, you know, he's yeah. 
a little obtrusive. So that's gonna have to get run back and then run through this wall. If they run it through the wall, then it's not gonna be in the way of everything. So dude, thanks for coming down. And working with Josh, you said Josh did a bang up job too. You got, it looks great. I just had two hands. Josh is a full two fledged. Hand, hey dude, he's two hands. Him loose, having two hands, helping us. He's a full fledged hammer chucker. Cool. <laughs> thanks brother, it's awesome. Good time. But a moment of silence. Quick pause while we walk in to the greenhouse. Folks, it's always a good 10, 20 degrees warmer in here. I've got both the garage door, the side door, and the back door open because it's hot as blazes in here. So I'm excited because the first guest that I had was actually my man Jeff from the Newport Aquarium. He gave me not one, but two 700 gallon tubs as a housewarming present from our friends at the Newport Aquarium. Note, I am gonna be setting up uh, three section, 18 foot long, uh, freshwater fall set up for them real soon. Click the links around and check how that's gonna go. But he brought those in for me and that was the first water that I had in here. But I wanna show kind of some of the nuts and bolts of what's been going on. I've got my own little bench set up. You'll notice we have power. We've got 20 amp circuits in every location. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there. One there, one there, one there, one there, and one over there. This was done with the design of Poppy. Poppy was in here and he said, why don't we just run one underneath the concrete, one conduit to each one before the concrete was laid. You can see the clips of how it looked. Putting everything under the concrete was key. We didn't want a bunch of unsightly uh, conduit all over the place. So we ran them up the poles just like that. Uh, while we're talking electric, one of the things that is not hooked up yet that needs to be hooked up pretty quickly are these side guillotine vents. These vents right here uh, open and close. You'll notice the temperature right here. This is being shot in late March here in Kentucky. It's, I don't know, 45, 50 outside. It's 80 in here. It was as high as 90 earlier. Uh, I do have a full entire Wadsworth controller that is so complicated I'm a little bit afraid of it, but it will open both the guillotine vents and the wonderful atrium style roof. While we're looking at the roof, I wanna walk you this way and then I wanna take a step and turn back. While designing this, which was fun, but which was not you know, easy, easy to do on paper, but to actually see it uh, in its construction is a different thing. You'll notice we're standing basically dead center in the center of the greenhouse. It is probably two or three o'clock in the afternoon. We are in full sun mode. I'm excited because the sun comes right over the building like this during the day and it's the arc of the sun is only going to continue to expand this way so in the summertime the sun is going to be way over here. We got the floor drain came through perfectly. I absolutely love it. My neighbor was asking me why I went with brushed concrete. I want a little bit of grit. Okay, I want a little bit of like texture to it so you're not slipping around all over the place. So we went with the brushed floor. The concrete itself, he cut it every uh, 12 feet. So far, so good, no cracks. The drain runs out two pipes that feed out the back. Uh, I'm incredibly impressed with the drain. So far, so good. So this is actually a, a mock-up prototype, if you will, of the system that I'm working on. I wanted to have everything uh, close to waist level and very ergonomical, I think is the word so that you can easily get into everything. When I design something, I always design it for me, but I don't think about the fact that my employees, both current and future employees, may not be as tall as me. So what I did was I designed it with, okay, cool, I can reach everywhere. I saw this at Seagrass, they have a step that leads up onto everything. I'm gonna build a step right here so that anybody can basically get onto anything that they want and all access. I'll probably do a platform right here so you could walk here get into any tank here. And then over here, we've got one, two, three, 55s that have uh, actually just been leak tested. They've been sitting in my garage forever. I think this was the old uh, no maintenance tank right here. May she rest in peace. But these were testing to see if they hold water. The third one doesn't. So we're uh, letting these sit, whatever holds water stays. But part of this design is to have a basin underneath here. And I almost killed myself and cut up my hands real bad making it or designing it, but I'll, the trick is that I'll have all the overflows come down into a central basin, which will give me more water volume. So I'll have full sun above, shade below, that'll keep temperature swings at bay. 
I'll use one of these beefy pumps and I'll tee it so it'll shoot off four this way, four that way with some space in between. I hate doing math publicly, but I think it calculates out to just shy of 300 gallons in the basin. These are 33 longs I got from my boys down at Imperial. There's one, two, three, four of them. That's 133 gallons plus one, two, three, four, fifty-fives. Four fifty-fives is uh, 220 gallons plus 130 gallons is uh, 253, 353 gallons. So 300 below, 300 above. And I'm uh, pretty excited to see that rolling. But I wanted to set it up and kind of like play with it and work with it without the liner cut. Because once you cut the liner, you know, it, it, it's over. You can't, you can't undo cutting the liner. So I am actually waiting on a giant heater to heat this up. I'm only going to run two watts per gallon on the heaters. So that's what we got going on here. I want to show this out here too. These are actually the six by sixes that are 24 feet long. Now these were a mistake because when I ordered the building, I didn't realize we had to have the, the building go six foot down. So these are the leftover um aaron calls them sticks those are just beastly pieces of wood those are 24 foot long six by uh six by sixes and with those i've been able to uh, cut them and use them they're pressure treated and i'm really excited to have that extra wood because a six by six can handle uh you know water and tanks or whatever so i'm not concerned about that and i've got uh room to spare with those so it's exciting to finally be utilizing those note to you folks those were actually set down on the property back uh, in September of last year. So I've been, uh, you know, sitting on 1200 hours worth of lumber. It's good to finally see it going and you can turn in here and you can see kind of, uh, another, just, I'm kind of playing with design right here with the, uh, the six by sixes double stack the foot off the ground. And then that's a four or a 33 long as well. And then we've got the six 40 talls behind that. So I'm still kind of in here uh, feeling my way around of how I want it to work because I might set it up and then redesign it. But so far, everything is going pretty good. So this is the Krenum Natanz repair. Nobody wants to talk about the ugly side of the biz, but this is it. So you get a plant in and it comes in and it's got like a bunch of leaves. And Krenum, you got to think of them more like trees or corals than like aquarium plants. So they hate to be moved. So we're going through here and peeling off all this stuff. But as long as you look at the center and you got that new growth, you're totally fine. But uh, it does take work to count the Natanz. By nature of the plant, the plant has bigger leaves, so it's not going to do as well uh, to like regrow versus a Calamastratum, which has multiple new leaves. You can see the difference between old leaf and then new leaf right here. Like all kinds of new leaves right on top and the smaller leaves grow faster. So just like a thin leaf valve versus like a, a really wide leaf valve, uh, the thin one will grow faster, but that's a Calamastratum, it's cousin, and it's growing along very quickly. But what we're doing here is we're just going through and picking out some of the stuff. But as you can see, I mean, you're gonna, it, it's gonna take a minute. I mean, you want an amazing plant, you're gonna have to do the work with it because it's gonna take time to grow. Cause it's like, just look at how thick these leaves are. It's gonna take more time to develop. It's gonna take more time to heal and get through it. Uh, I'm leaving these little bit of ones with green on here to do some photosynthesis. But you can see this plant, while not perfect, is by, by all means and all stretches of the word healthy. Crenum lose all their roots and Denerla actually cuts all their roots. I haven't touched any of the roots on these plants, but this plant will be fine, but it just needs some time to get together. Booyah. But well, what's nice, I have so much water. This is my favorite thing. These are tanks that I'm testing to see if they still hold water. This is from our friends at Flugel. This is an SP6. This is the big one right here. This is the big boy. Um, I'll have to get you, I'll put the specs in the comments on it. But this sucker, it pipes into one and a quarter inch standard PVC. I've got it choked down to one inch. But watch this thing. Aaron, watch yourself, brother. We got a shot, shot back. Shot back here in the city. But what it is doing, well, A, it's fun. B, it's knocking all the jumps off of there, and then it overflows onto the tub. But look at that height on that. Look at that height on that pump. And I'm using this water right here because this is water that's gotten up to temperature because I don't have my inline water heater in here yet. Whoa. 
Drop me a comment on what you think about how Greenhouse 2.0 is coming. A lot of great stuff heading your way. We got the new Port Aquarium, 18 foot, and Dustin and his crew are going down to Aquachella, bro. Dustin does Dallas. Make it an awesome week, folks. Tank on. And just to show you real quick, this whole system is being uh, under filtered, but still, this is an FX4. This is the FX4 just rocking it on here. And I mean, look, the FX4 isn't meant for a 700 gallon tub. But it's certainly, you know, pumping it along quite nicely, if I do say so myself, so. Dying is these things set up. <laughs>